ABC Action News. Now, your table is ready. Join 13 ABC's Jeff Smith with the decision makers of Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. This is the Roundtable. And a good Sunday afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you're enjoying the weekend. Nice weather out there to boot. Coming up in our second segment, a big opening weekend for the Toledo Zoo. A new exhibit there, the Tembo Trail. We will talk with Dr. Ann Baker in just a moment. But first, we wanted to direct our discussion at this first part of the show to Toledo Public Schools and what the school district has announced Four voters here in the Toledo district come November and with us Jim Gold. He is uh, with the Toledo uh, Public Schools. You are uh, director of academics there at right. the district and Jim, we will start with you. We will get to our other guests in just a second, but you guys are going out there early on. You didn't have to announce going on the ballot until August, right? And you guys are out there early on saying we are going to be on the ballot this election year with a 6.9 mil levy. Yeah. We had to uh, in terms of the cuts that have been coming uh, from the state and from the federal in terms of our revenue coming in. The only way that we can continue with our quality programming in terms of our transformation plan is if we go out and ask for additional support. We've made tremendous improvements into little public schools. We believe the community is uh, behind us in terms of supportive of the changes that we made and this will be a community effort in terms of getting this levy passed. Are there focus groups done before you guys go out there or anything along those lines? You said we feel the community support is there, not to play devil's advocate, but we've heard that before. Yeah, well, we've had uh, uh, been meeting with groups all through this transformation, actually before the transformation began in terms of with uh, parents, community leaders, business leaders, and in terms of trying to develop a district that will be responsive to what their needs are. Yeah. We have done some polling and uh, polling uh, appears to be favorable and uh, we are obviously not going to just rest on that. We'll be very aggressive in terms of getting our word out. We believe we have a good story to tell. We believe that a strong school system leads to a strong community and a strong community leads to higher property values and businesses wanting to come to Toledo and Northwest Ohio. I have a problem. I fall back sometime into using sports references when we look at economics, that kind of thing. The baseball strike after that happened back in the 90s, they had a hard time bringing the fans back. Correct. You guys had a real stain with the books problems and keeping records as far as your the economy of Toledo Public Schools. and. How do you shake that off? Do you think there is still trust out there among the Toledo residents that TPS can handle its books and be a good steward of the taxpayers' money? Well, part of our transformation plan has always been to be very transparent, and we've tried very hard to be transparent. You can come to one of our finance meetings, uh, which is an open meeting uh, held monthly, and you can see every check that is written in terms of to vendors and et cetera. So the district is committed to continue to be transparent, to be good stewards of the dollars that we have, and more importantly, to put quality programs in place that are going to impact our students in terms of academic success. And was that a reactive move, putting those checks out there, letting people see no, that? I, I think, uh, you know, and we're trying to be as efficient as possible, and I think that uh, what we're trying to do as a district is to be transparent. Uh, obviously, dollars are tight, not only in our school district, but across many of our parents' homes and community homes, and we want to show that we're being good stewards of those dollars in terms of putting it towards the kids and putting it towards programs that are going to make a difference. There was a real show of support on uh, earlier this week when it was announced that the levy was going to be on the ballot. We have invited here today some of those other players in the community directly linked with Toledo Public Schools. Len Smith is with Toledo Federation of Teachers also here this afternoon. Don Yates, Toledo Association of Administrative Personnel, and next to him, uh, Dave Blythe Jr. He is from AFSCME Local. We appreciate all of you taking some time. Why is there, obviously, all of, all of your titles sound off one thing, union support as far as this issue is concerned. TPS going back to the, back to the voters. Are the teachers on board with this right now? Is, it, is the timing right? Absolutely. I think that we are definitely at a cross, you're, we're, we've got an opportunity here to really make some impact and make some forward movement. Teachers are 100% behind this. Toledo Federation of Teachers is 100% behind this. We have the um, endorsement of our board of directors, our elected officers, as well as our building uh, elected representatives. Do, do, do the teachers think that cascades down to the parents, the students, that kind of thing, as far as everybody being on board and, and thinking this timing is right? I believe so. I think that we all know that um, it's important for all of us to be putting out our, our positive 
points right now and talking with each other and talking to our neighbors, talking to our parents, talking to, you know, everybody needs to be talking to each other and just getting the word out. So, yeah. yes, I Don, do. I want to switch this over to you and as you guys look at the, the landscape that is Toledo and one of the interesting things I found was that, and, and I brought this up last week, I had some people here who were talking about the housing economy and the housing market right now and we noticed when TPS brought out the details of this levy, they started breaking it down as far as the owner, we, the bellwether used to be $100,000 house, here's what you're going to have to pay. And for this levy, it's a little over $200 annually, more a year in taxes. But we started looking at $60,000 because home values have dropped. So reading the economy right now, what's your read on once we get to November, are people going to say yes to this? Well, I don't, I don't claim to be a, a financial guru. I can tell you that uh, TPS is a very different place than it was uh, even a year ago. Well, then let me pose it. Why do people need to say yes to this? People need to say yes to this for, for a variety of reasons. Number one, what Mr. Gulch just shared with folks as far as the, the district is transforming itself. Uh, we are more accountable. Uh, we are reaching out uh, to our community. Uh, we are asking that the community be uh, partners with the school. Uh, we are producing a better product quite frankly, than what we've produced in the past. And I think uh, the word's going to get out in the next uh, six months. People are going to hear that. They're going to see that. I think the reason you have community people on board now is because the district has reached out. Mm -hmm. I think parents are beginning to see that. I think kids are beginning to see that. We're having kids come back from charter schools. I think um, there's recognition that for Toledo as a city to be successful, uh, the schools have to be successful. And I think everybody is on that, uh, that bandwagon for the economy to get better, the schools have to be better, for housing values to go up, the school district has to be successful as well as the city. I'm not doubting your word, but I'm interested in what he just said as far as the kids coming back from charter schools. You, you got statistics showing that's pretty high rate? <laughs> well, what we're looking at uh, right now, we just recently had our Ed Choice uh, program end. So we know and can state that there are less students who are utilizing that Ed Choice and choosing Toledo Public Schools. And that's in essence how we were able to bring freshman sports back. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that dollars were found. Uh, what happened was it was that less dollars were going out to Ed Choice in terms of uh, for our parochials and it was enabled, enabled us to bring back something for our kids which is freshman sports. We've not done a very good job of marketing our district uh, historically. Uh, I think you're going to see a big change. I think we're already seeing a big change. Uh, we are getting uh, the word out and the community needs to hear why uh, it's important to send their kids to TPS rather than sending them someplace else. Dave, as you look at the landscape as far as TPS is concerned, and obviously with everything hinges on the schools. Uh, schools bring in residents, uh, jobs bring in obviously all of those people who have the kids, but we're seeing an economic landscape improve around Toledo, a little bit of a recovery there. And as you look at what TPS is doing, how does TPS, he said we need to do a better marketing job or TPS is doing better recently. What is the word that needs to go out right now to kind of change that mindset? Well, um, I think the message uh, from the voters was you need to tighten your belt, you need to do more with less. And that's why last summer when we renegotiated our, our contract for, for the next these two years, mm -hmm. uh, the contract talks revolved around concessions. So we, we did step up and uh, we ended up with a 2.5% uh, reduction in pay. That was in addition to the 1% we gave back in 2010. There was also a huge uh, cost shift in health care costs from the employer to the employees. So our people have stepped up. And uh, frankly, this was after a period of time from I think it was 2001 through 2007, there were no raises at all given to the ASME folks. So right now, our wage and health care costs have taken our average members back to where they were in 1996 as far as, you know, compensation. So we heard people tighten up, do more with less, ask yourself, uh, you know, how much is this going to cost, whatever the decision is, right. and, and we've heard it and we've stepped up. So it, it, we're, at, we're telling the voters, look, it, we heard you, we've responded, we're making sacrifices, so now we're asking you to come aboard and uh, you know, make TPS even better and, and let's embrace these programs that I'm sure Jim and, and Don can get into more detail yeah. that, that we're embracing. $18 million is what this would bring in, 
Correct. Potentially, potentially, Correct. is any of that money going towards salaries? Uh, we have a balanced budget uh, for next school year as well. There aren't any reopeners with that. Uh, you know, we obviously will be going into negotiations at the end of next year, but uh, we can state that uh, there is there are no reopeners within built within our contracts. We'll go through negotiations, and the thing that these dollars are going to be used for is that we have a lot of programs that have we've started and it will enable those c programs to continue mm -hmm. uh, you know we have right now about 600 students that are seventh and eighth graders who are getting transportation to their high schools and earning high school credits and their cumulative gpa is a 3.67 on a 4.0 scale next year we have 800 students that are signed up to receive that type of instruction it allows them to earn credits at a quicker rate, which is going to improve the graduation rate. But the other thing that's important, it will enable them their senior year to start taking advanced level courses, whether they're post-secondary, whether they're AP, but students will get through those requirements quicker and be able to expand their education. That stuff is happening right now. It's this happening right yeah, now. That's not hinging on any and, and of this it all start. It all started this year, but in order for that to continue, yeah it will have be uh, based upon uh, passage of the state. And we have seen this district, or Northwest Ohio wide, with a number of districts halting their increases, salaries taking uh, more, more for health care, that kind of thing. Is there a mood right now among teachers that they're a little hesitant going into negotiations next year? Well, I think the focus for us is the just getting this levy passed and putting out, being able to put forward the best quality education that we can and continuing with these programs that Jim spoke of um, that offer our students really just an enormous amount of choice and opportunity. And that, that's really where our focus is at this point. But a positive atmosphere? A positive atmosphere, absolutely. You obviously, as chief academic officer, you look around the state and see how other, other urban districts are maintaining their programs and trying to implement new things. There was an article uh, uh, a couple Sundays ago regarding the Cincinnati schools and how they've been able to turn things around and comparing and contrasting to urban districts. This levy would also allow you guys to implement changes at the high schools. Talk a little bit about that. You want to you're getting kids back from charter schools but you're almost talking about creating a charter mentality. Well what we're looking at doing is if you look at the economic drivers in terms of where the job market is moving forward you're going to see that it's in medicine and you're going to see that it's in alternative energy resources. So what we would like to do is develop programs within our schools that are going to have those students prepared uh, for those job markets. Last year alone over 10,000 jobs uh, within over tens of thousands of jobs mm -hmm across our nation went unfilled because they did not have a quality workforce that could fill those, particularly around alternative energy. So what we would like to do is develop programming within our high schools that will help prepare those students for those jobs of tomorrow. So basically you take the high schools, you revamp them. You, you have Bowser, you have Start, you have Scott, you have uh, Woodward. All of them take on this new identity, well, correct? Well, they, they would. They would have programs within them. All of our schools would still have a college prep program. Okay. And still would be able, all of our students would be able to go there, get a top-notch education and continue to go to college. But there would be special programs that would be theme focused that students could attend within these schools. Almost like technical schools to that effect? Yeah, for example, if you look at Woodward, we would like to make that a renewable and uh, alternative energy school. Mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Bowser, what we would like to do is put uh, our arts and medicine in terms of uh, uh, at uh, our schools at Wait, we want to focus on engineering, business, and in terms of uh, education. Mm -hmm. So all of these schools would have the ability to uh, have these programmings as well as their traditional college program. The other thing too we want to point out, if a, if a kid is in the weight district all of a sudden decides I like the sports medicine that's being offered at Bowser High School, right. I'm sorry, Rogers High School, right. sports right. Med they would be the sports medicine directive, I can go to that school even yeah. though I don't live in that district. That's correct. We would enable uh, uh, open enrollment, you know, obviously depending upon space, but uh, we would want those children to be able to uh, realize their dream and be a part of that program. And as you guys look at the landscape moving forward, obviously still early on, but what is the best thing finishing out this year, going into next year that you want to see from Toledo Public? Well, I think the excitement that has been generated. I guess year, what needs to happen over the summer? Uh, the, the excitement that's been generated this year, we need to continue to build on the positive things that, that have occurred. And the reality is, there's an excitement in our schools, not only uh, amongst our, our kids, but our staff, because there are new inventive uh, programs coming into play. Uh, the reality is, for those programs to continue and for them to expand, it takes money. 
the reality is if that levy does not pass, these programs will not go forward. And we're competing with other districts now for our employees, teachers as well as administrators. If we don't have uh, the funding to continue the programs, they close down. If we don't, can't compete with other districts for salaries, we lose our best people. And Dave, finally, are you hearing from your workers that the community is starting to really show its support behind TPS like they've never seen before. I'm talking parents, I'm talking other just community members kind of rallying around these schools. Yeah, I, I think there's an awareness uh, <laughs> that it, it's it's time uh, for the voters to say, you know what, let's let's give some new money. This will be the first time in 11 years that we've, we've got new money. Uh, almost a generation has gone by of children and we've uh, struggled to uh, you know, deal with that. So I think the, the community is getting the message. Uh, our members are, are stepping up and being ambassadors in the community and letting them know, you know, this is a good investment. Like at the press conference we had, we mentioned mm -hmm. an investment in the community, an investment in our students. Let's keep Toledo strong. And we're talking about a third time going toward uh, voters with a levy request uh, similar to this. And right now, TPS doesn't have any competition, but it's early still as far as the ballot is concerned. There's nothing else on the ballot at this time. But then again, July and August are deadlines for uh, anybody to get their initiatives on the ballot for the big general election, which comes up this year in November. All of you, thank you for taking the time to discuss this. Stay right there. We talk with Dr. Ann Baker about the Toledo Zoo when we return.